everyone. Welcome to our homeschool table. My name is Gerilyn. I'm a mom of three kids, ages nine, three, and 10 months old. And today I'm going to be sharing about the math curriculum that we will be using this coming year, which is the 2024-2025 school year. My daughter will be in fifth grade and we have been using Matthew C since the very beginning when she started kindergarten. We used their primer level um, in kindergarten we used alpha in first grade, which is all about addition. We used beta in second grade, all about subtraction. We used um, gamma in third grade, which was all about multiplication. And this year for fourth grade, we are using the division book, which is delta. So next year we are heading into the epsilon book, which is all about fractions. And so I just wanted to show you what the program comes with, uh, look inside of the teacher's manual and the student workbook and the manipulative set so that you can see um, what exactly Matthew C is all about at this level. So first, this curriculum comes with a teacher's manual. It comes with a student workbook. Each of the levels comes with an instructional DVD, and these are videos that are technically for the parent to watch to learn how to teach the material. Um, but so many people that I had seen before I started using this program recommended just having your child watch the video with you that I went ahead and have been doing that since kindergarten. And uh, we really like these videos. They're very short, maybe three to six minutes at the most and then you are ready to do that week's um, workbook pages and work for the week. So these are really, really nice to have, uh, not only for the parent, but for the child as well. And then this level, because of the fraction uh, focus, there is a fractions overlay kit. And so I will show you what is all inside of that as well. So. Let's go ahead and turn the camera around and I will first start out by showing you the teacher's manual. So here is the instructor's manual for the Epsilon Fraction Book. And so we are going to go ahead and start by looking at the contents page. So you can always pause right here and zoom in if you would like to see closer up of each of the lessons. But everything mostly is about Fraction. So we have fraction of a number, fraction of one, add and subtract fractions, equivalent fractions, adding and subtracting, the rule of four, which is a Matthew C um, approach to, um, to fractions, comparing them, um, adding multiple fractions, multiplying them, dividing them, uh, simplifying mixed numbers and improper fractions, addition and subtraction of mixed numbers, um, dividing fractions, solving for an unknown, multiplying mixed numbers. So, oh, here's area of a circumference, area and circumference of a circle, um, fractions to decimals to percents. So we have lots of uh, different topics here that all mostly have to do with fractions. So I just wanted to show you, here's all of the kind of pre-reading that you need to do, but this is how a lesson would work. So you as the parent would watch the DVD for lesson one, and I would recommend uh, reading through the book. At this higher level of math, I am doing a lot more paying attention to the instructor's manual than I was say in primer and alpha because that um, was pretty basic as far as um, addition and subtraction goes. But the higher we get, the more I use the teacher's manual. So what you would do is you would just read through the lesson and there are a couple of pages. So that was lesson one um, and then you would go through some practice problems. Now, oftentimes the 
the video that Mr. Demi shows and teaches uses the examples from the book. Uh, sometimes he goes through just one or two examples, other times he might go over a couple of things. Um, there's, always pro um, there's always a section for word problem tips and strategies for word problems kind of sprinkled throughout the lessons. Uh, if you are not super familiar with Matthew C, there is a pretty big emphasis on word problems and being able to write down the information from that word problem. Um, so that is kind of how this teacher's manual goes. It's just a couple of pages for each lesson. So I'll just flip through for a few lessons so you can see. Some of the lessons are really short, just a page front and back. Some are a little bit longer. But now let's go towards the back. Oh, another thing about Matthew C is that each of the levels has 30 lessons. You can do a lesson a week. We usually do that at the beginning of the school year and then we slow down towards the end because they get a lot more difficult. We always get to a point in the spring where things are getting really hard and sometimes frustrating. And so we slow down quite a bit in the spring. Then after lesson 30, there is an appendix, which actually has some workbook uh, pages that go with it. And I'll show you that when we get to the workbook, but this one only has appendix A. Some of the others have appendix B also. Um, and then it goes into, so if you look here, this is kind of the first half of the book. And then the second half of the book here this is the solutions manual. So every um, unit or lesson, so let's say lesson one has A, B, C, D, E, F, and then there's a G page, but they have a separate section back here for the, the solutions to the G pages. I'll show you that as well. Um, but basically, the way that Matthew C works is that the first three lessons are just the new information. So that would be A, B, and C. Then they have what they refer to as systematic review, and that would be pages D, E, and F. And then the G pages are enrichment and application. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So let's go ahead Oh, another thing at the back of the solution section, these are all of the just regular um, A through F pages. Then we get to the application and enrichment solution. So that would be the G page that I will show you. So this is going to give you sometimes pictures and things in that section. Then after application and enrichment, you get to the test solutions. There is a, oh, I forgot to show that. There is a test booklet that also comes with the program. And uh, so each of the lessons has a test. And then every few lessons, there's a unit review. So for instance, it'll show you here. Yes. So lesson tests one through eight. And then after that, there's a unit test one. And so that would be a review of all the information for lessons one through eight. Then you have some more lesson tests. And then here is unit test two after lesson 16. So there are four of those. And then at the very end, after lesson test 30, there is a unit, the um, fourth unit test, plus then a final test. And so you can decide whether you want to do all these tests or not, or if you can just kind of gauge where your child is. I give the tests every time um, just to make sure uh, that my daughter's on the right track, and then we will um, 
keep going if we need a few more pages of that lesson, um, if we need to. At the back of the book, there is also a symbols and tables page, and there is another one of these in your student's book. So this um, is handy because it never leaves the book like the other one does because it's perforated and sometimes it gets lost. But this just has lots of information that your child can use. And I let my daughter use this on the tests and just in her daily work so that she can remember different uh, measurement conversions or different um, equations that she would need to solve area, perimeter, things like that. It has ex expanded notation. Um, so that's just a single side. The current year that we're working on has a double-sided one, but um, this is really important. And I will be laminating this from now on, uh, especially now that the books are getting much more complicated. Then there's a glossary in the back of the teacher's manual and an appendix of all the different things that you might need to look for if you're looking for something specific. So next, let's look at the student workbook. Now this is a pretty thick workbook. It has 434 pages and those are double-sided so it's 216, 17, 217 actual sheets of paper. Um, but, oops, sorry for the shaking camera. At the front of the book you will have a page that looks like this and this shows the lesson practice pages for each of the lessons, then the systematic review, and then the test. Notice they don't have the um, application and enrichment pages um, as something that you would grade. This can be used as a grading sheet if you want to. Um, I haven't really used it in the past, but I actually am thinking about doing that this coming year because then I can get a good idea of just kind of how things are going all along the way. It starts right in to the first lesson. So each of the lessons has seven pages. It has A through G. So this would be after you've taught the lesson, um, my suggestion is to do this first A page with your child. And you can either write the, um, the problems on a whiteboard and then they can do it on their paper or you can sit next to each other and just both do it on the paper, however you like to do it. But I would recommend going through this first one together. So this is the first day, is just this front and back. So here's the front, here's the back. Uh, this one has five questions. Then we move on to lesson practice 1B. So this would be the second day. And then there's a couple of story problems. This is 15 problems total. Then 1C, notice that they're always just one page front and back. That is one thing that I really like about Matthew C is that it's to the point, has good review. So this is the day, the D, E and F are the review. So it'll have a quick little review and then it will um, have some story problems. E will have some of the similar problems that they worked on yesterday in the review. And then F. E and F, D, E and F are a little bit longer. Then here is the first G page, application and enrichment. And this is just um, to work on some of the vocabulary. And then you go into the second lesson for the next week. So each of the lessons works the exact same way and they do get a lot more challenging as you go throughout the book. At the back of the book, after lesson 30, you will find the appendix and the, these are the lesson practice pages that go along with that. So A stands for appendix, sheet number one, two, sorry for the shaking, and then here's the page I was telling you about that has the symbols and tables, exactly the same as the one that was in the instructor's manual. So my plan is to um, tear this out. These are perforated pages and then uh, laminate it so that my daughter can keep it um, handy and she won't accidentally recycle it because it'll be plastic. 
Then it has a glossary for the students, which we never use. And at the very end is a congratulations, you completed the course. And then it tells you which book you're moving on to next if you are going to do the whole course or do the next level. So the way that we do this, especially at the beginning of the school year when the lessons aren't as challenging and it doesn't take as many days to master the concept, um, we do the A page on Monday. Well, first we watch the video and do the practice problems together. Then we do the A page together. On So that was, we do the A page on Monday. We do the B page on Tuesday. I take C out and I leave it in a special separate folder because we might need to come back and use this later as extra practice. So I never get rid of pages. I, I keep them if we're not gonna use that page right away. Um, so the C page I would keep aside. Then on Wednesday, I would do the D page. This is the first systematic review where there's going to be a review section and then um, some practice problems. And then the E page we would do on Thursday with some more of those systematic review problems. Um, the F page is another one that I would um, set aside in that separate folder to possibly be used later um, as review. And then here we have the G page and you can choose whether you have your student do this or not. We usually, um, unless it looks like something that I think my daughter would really enjoy, um, we often skip these or we leave them for that special folder that we get out later on to do some extra practice. Okay, now let's look at the fraction overlay kit. So this has lots of manipulatives to use. It folds out into four sections here. This section over here is the resource section. It has the pamphlet about the program. It has these green cards. If I, I haven't used this yet, but if I am just thinking about it, um, these would be considered one whole because a unit is colored green in Matthew C. So these would be the units. So then it comes with this little booklet for the fraction overlay kit, concepts taught using manipulatives, We have a motorcycle parade going on, so that's exciting. And then it has some reference cards. So here's the rule of four, and then customary units of length, and then comparing fractions. So those all go here in the resource section. So now let's look at this first pocket. This has halves and thirds. So when you open it up, you can pull out that section. So here are the halves. It comes with half pieces and you can put this on, can you see that? You put that on top and then you can put, this is one whole. So these are the half overlays. Then we have the same thing for thirds. So you can practice one third or you can practice two thirds or you can practice one third plus two thirds equals one whole or something like that. So it just goes like that through all of the different sections. So we have fourths and fifths, sixths, and then we have eighths, tenths, sixteenths, and units. So let's take a look at those. So these are really tiny. So you can see the little, oops, you can see the sections there. And 
and then it has all sorts of little um, sections for that color. So this must be the eighths because in Matthew C. Blocks, brown is chocolate. So I hope that was helpful seeing inside of the Matthew C. program. Um, some of the pointers that I have um, for using Matthew C., like I said when I was showing the student workbook pages, the way we have used this at the beginning of the year when the concepts aren't as challenging, we do the A page on Monday, the B page on Tuesday. We put the C page aside in that special folder that I talked about. And then we do the D page on Wednesday, the E page on Thursday. We save F for the special folder that we set aside for extra practice later. And we either do the G page on Friday along with the test, or we just skip it and put it in that special folder where we save them for practice later. So this is my folder of all of the pages from this current year that we haven't used. So I just keep them all in order from lesson one through whatever we're on now. And I, if we need a day of just some extra practice or I need something easier that is not going to cause any tears or arguments about math, I might just pull out one of these older sheets and have her do one of those. And so I even have a little sticky note that says, start here, because I've been going through and just taking out one page. So I just keep these, there's not very many, but um, I just keep them in a separate folder, and then I use these throughout the school year as extra practice. Sometimes you might need a little bit of extra practice on some of the easier concepts. Maybe um, at the beginning of the year, they kind of fly through um, the first few lessons, and then um, in the review section, they don't always come back to each of the skills uh, super regularly, or um, it just might be several lessons that they haven't practiced something. So I like to have um, some extra multiplication and division pages, especially just so that my daughter doesn't forget how to um, regroup and or carry as we knew it, um, things like that. And so I, um, I often use the Matthew C digital toolbox. When you purchase the materials and you have also purchased the digital tools, um, you will get a code to go onto the website and kind of redeem your, um, your level. And so, Within the digital toolbox, there is a section where you can actually make your own worksheets. And you can actually make worksheets from any of the different levels, not just the one that you are currently on. So I can go into the digital toolbox worksheet generator and I can um, make a whole page or uh, a couple pages of addition and subtraction with regrouping. Uh, or I can do a mixture of multiplication and addition and some division problems because you actually pick the, um, the lesson numbers that you want to focus on. So um, if you want a separate video on the digital toolbox, I'm happy to do that because it is extremely helpful and I have found it very useful, uh, not only this year, but in the last couple of years. So definitely, get the digital toolbox if you are buying Matthew C brand new. If you are buying Matthew C used, you can purchase the digital toolbox by itself. I think it's around $48 um, from what I've seen. And um, then you get that access code that you can um, go online and put that in to get your um, all your digital toolbox stuff. So. It is very worth it. I highly recommend it. I really like Matthew C a lot and we will definitely be continuing with it. 
However, we do add some supplements just for that extra review because it is a mastery program. It has some review built in, but not like some of the other programs that you'll find. So um, we just like to have a lot of extra practice um, for my daughter. So I hope this video was helpful and thank you for sticking around this long uh, to hear all about Matthew C. If you've made it this far, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, it really helps me out and um, helps my channel to grow. Uh, I also really like getting to know everybody in the comments. So please don't feel shy to leave a comment down below and say hi or where you're from or what math you use, um, things like that. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll see you next time.